Hello guys and welcome to the video. Today uh, we're going to do something a bit different. I'm going to call this Let's Talk and I'm just going to do some really casual segments where I'm just going to answer some questions I've been asked and talk about little bits of gear. A lot more of uh, an informal thing. I love doing my in-depth reviews but they take a lot of time, effort and preparation and this is a way for me to create more content in a kind of a more relaxed environment. So one thing that I really want to talk about. One thing that I really want to talk about is iMovie because I'm using it so much. Uh, now I've been asked to make a video about how to edit iMovie on an iPhone and that's something that I'm really going to look at doing in the next kind of couple of weeks as soon as I can because I've got a backlog of reviews that I'm putting together at the moment on a couple of mics and stuff like that. But today we're going to be looking at iMovie because I use it a lot and I think it's actually a really decent piece of software. It does have its limitations and there are some things missing and I will talk about those. Now, it is actually a really decent piece of software considering it's free. Now, I'm a Mac user. I ended up on Mac because I'm professionally trained on Logic Pro from Logic 7 up to Pro X. So it kind of naturally ended up me progressing into being a Mac owner and user for pretty much everything. And of course, iMovie came with the Mac and it was a natural thing for me to learn it with what I'm doing. It's got most of the basic features that you want. You know, it will, you can import all kinds of different video sizes and formats. Um, you can edit basic audio levels. There's some simple filters, there's some text features. So, and a lot of transition options as well. So, it's actually a pretty simple, easy to use piece of kit. You know, it has its limitations though. You're only bound to one track at a time, kind of visually, well, two tracks really. And you can only have two tracks of audio on one of them being music. So you are limited to the amount of tracks that you've got to work with and you have to get really, really creative. If you're wanting to do something that's really big and really heavy hitting and you've got lots and lots of different angles being captured and you want to sync them all together and then chop in and out of say camera one, two, three, four, this is not gonna work so easily for you. Like the video that I made for Easter was really, really difficult because I kind of overdubbed all these different guitar parts and vocal parts and trying to put that together in iMovie was a real pain, whereas it would have taken literally, it would not have taken nearly as much time uh, in something like Premiere or something like that where you've got a lot more tracks going on. So you've got all the basic things that you would like. If you want to make time lapses, then you kind of got to do a bit of fudging around. Uh, and I've got a tutorial showing how to do that. But there isn't a import image selection. And it'd be really, really nice to have that if you wanting to create a time lapse out of stills. Um, but I think... Yeah, and it would for me, now I really love audio and sound and music and it would be really, really great to have more options in the audio front because you've actually just got this little fader to work with and it's not even a, a decent size fader. It's a little tiny awkward thing. In fact, I'm just gonna boot up OBS here and start a recording I can show you. So in the sound uh, bar, if I just click, select this clip here, and volume and you've got to use this little fader here which is okay if you want to do a quick adjustment but if you really want to do some fine tuned stuff there's no automation allowed and there's no mixer or anything like that you're, you're very much stuck to this tool and actually if you want to be doing a lot of work and you want to be doing a lot of heavy audio work iMovie's not so great for that there's an option so you can view the waveform and that's really nice so for instance, if I turn it on, I've just got it off for now to save some processing power because I'm using a lot of clips, but I can show the waveform and it will show me the waveforms and that's that definitely helps me with my editing process. But like I said, you've just got this little fader and that's a bit awkward. You have an option of some EQs, so I always set it to flat EQ because, well, um, frankly, I'm not that impressed with most of the stuff that comes in iMovie. Um, I've used bass reduce and treble reduce and that's about it. Everything else I don't want to go near. Um, plus I'm doing some EQ in line which is on the signal that I'm recording for my audio. Anyway, I've already got some EQ going on there before it gets to my recording. So 
it's got some really decent features. Like I said, you can do transitions, you can speed up and slow down playback times, which is really, really great. It handles all different file formats really easily. It's actually got quite um, an intuitive interface. So as from a user interface side of things, it's pretty easy to use. And it's a lot like Final Cut Pro. Hmm, I wonder why that is. In the same way that GarageBand looks an awful lot like Logic Pro. I wonder why that is. Well, it's because it's a tiered product. And what that means is actually iMovie is designed to get you so far, but if you actually wanna go further, it's designed to angle you towards getting the professional software, which is in this case, Final Cut Pro, or in the music case, uh, music case in the music productions case, on the side of the music software, you've got GarageBand who, GarageBand, GarageBand who are trying to steer you towards, well, Apple who are trying to steer you towards getting Logic Pro if you want the bigger features. And it's got plenty of stuff in there to, to get you get you by, you know, if, you, if you're just doing this as a hobby and you're not wanting to do anything of massive production value, you're probably gonna be fine with this and it's gonna do you really well. I can do a lot in iMovie. And if you're willing to be creative, you know, though you can really, you can get creative within the boundaries that you've got. But actually there has been projects where I just wouldn't have been able to complete them on iMovie just because the amount of, just the sheer amount of production involved in it and iMovie just really hits those walls when you want to do something really massive like if if you were doing a feature film or you're doing a short film and you've got lots of different things going on iMovie might not be your best bet but you, I'm not saying you can't do it you absolutely can but if you're wanting to do multiple camera angles and all that kind of stuff iMovie is going to really annoy you <laughs> it's going to get to the point where it frustrates you but it's got some really good features but it is tiered towards getting you on to Final Cut Pro eventually if you are serious about making videos and making lots of content. Um, now, I think it's got some it's got some really, really handy stuff. You can actually green screen in iMovie, which is fantastic. So I do a lot of things with um, like transparent layers uh, that really help, like my social media icons is an example of that. Um, in fact, I'll show you really quickly if I can go and find it. So just open Finder here, uh, desktop, YouTube, layers and music. And I've got these here, which are green. Basically it's a green background with some white text or black text. And I just green screen that out. And that just essentially works like a transparent layer because the online free online software that I'm using doesn't have the ability to create the transparent background. So I think iMovie is really great, but it does have its limitations and it is trying to steer you towards getting Final Cut Pro if you really want to get into the heavy editing stuff. Now, one thing that is really good about iMovie is actually it's really quick in terms of rendering, handling files and scrubbing, all that kind of stuff, because it's it's all um, it's all utilized and matched for Mac hardware and the Mac operating system. Premiere and things like that are not because, well, they're not specifically designed to run on Mac. So you need a bit more muscle to run them. And that's one thing where Final Cut Pro definitely wins out on fi over Premiere because it is um, it is optimized for Mac only. And therefore it's gonna run a lot faster, it's gonna scrub a lot faster, and it is gonna render a lot faster. So iMovie being a kind of, I don't know, the younger brother almost of Final Cut Pro, it has some of these cons where it's really, really, really quick and really intuitive in terms of handling things. You don't necessarily have the finite tuning and adjustment and the detailed stuff that you might want with Premiere, but if you really want that and you really need that, well then pay for it. <laughs> but you've got, you got some options for, you know, you can do your white balance and some color corrections. You've got some filter options and text options and most of that, if you get creative with that, that's gonna get you by for most of what you're doing. Like I said, I've been really, really enjoying iMovie, but there have been times when it has met those barriers. And for me, it has really felt like it's forced. Um, it really feels like it's forcing me towards getting Final Cut Pro, which does, a, does, does irritate me a bit. I don't mind that it's a tiered product at all. I really don't. But it annoys me because I know that, that iMovie has lost features over the years. And it wouldn't be difficult to add in, say, an import image sequence or stuff like that, uh, or a blur function, little things like that that could be in here and may have been here at some point, but has lost it over time. And that, for me, makes it feel like it has lost 
Ace Lost feature and it loses a bit of its shine because it feels like it's driving you towards it. But um, tell me, what do you think about iMovie? What are you using yourself? How long have you been using it? Have you got any tips and tricks you want to share or tutorials? Uh, I really like iMovie, but as I said, it's got its limitations. Please like, comment and subscribe and all that goodness. And thank you for stopping by.